Greetings and salutations to my church family, to my Facebook friends, to my YouTube friends, and soon to come, uh, my um, um, podcast friends. Uh, welcome to another edition of Moments with the Master. Moments with the Master was primarily designed to come to us each and every Monday and Friday at 8 a.m. On Monday to kick off our week or begin our week and on Friday to help us end our week to the glory of God. And we want to encourage you, we want to help you to take the time to spend a moment with the master, listening to the master. How can I listen to the master? Well, first of all, you have to look at the word in order to listen to the word. Then you must learn from the word, be willing to lean on the word, and do all you can to live by the word. Beloved, I have a question. My question is this, what have we learned over the coming weeks, over the past weeks? What have we learned? I'll tell you what we've learned. Number one, we've learned that the world's smallest yet largest troublemaker is the human tongue. That's right. The, the world's smallest yet largest troublemaker is the human, is the human tongue. James chimes in on this in James chapter three, verse number five. He says that the tongue is, is a tiny thing, but all oh, the enormous damage it can do. Even James agrees that the human tongue is the world's smallest yet largest troublemakers. Not, have we, not only have we learned that the tongue is the world's smallest yet largest troublemaker, we also learned the fact that there are four fundamental forms of speech according to the word of God. There are four ways we can use or misuse our tongues. Notice, if you will, the first use is careful speech careful speech. Secondly, there is careless speech. Then there's conflicting speech. And last but not least, there is constructive speech. Constructive speech. As a form of review, what is careful speech? Careful speech is directive. It provides direction if you will. Not only does it provide direction, careful speech is always controlled speech. It's always guarded speech because careful speech is directive. Don't miss this. Careful speech is directive in nature. Secondly, there's careless speech. Careless speech is uncontrolled speech. It's unguarded speech. And careless speech is always destructive. It's always destructive. And then there is conflicting speech. Conflicting speech is always deceptive. It's always at odds with actions and our words. They don't agree. They're at odds with one another. So conflicting speech is always deceptive. And last but not least, there's constructive speech. What is constructive speech? Constructive speech always serves to develop and bring delight to the heart of God. Constructive speech means we are always building people up and never trying to tear them down. So constructive speech is very important and is one of the fundamental forms 
of speech. It's one of the four ways we can use our tongue or use our mouths. Now listen to me, listening friends. Listen to me carefully because you'll almost miss it if you're not careful. If you're in a hurry to read the word of God, you'll miss it. I want you to see something in verses 1 through 12. James uses what I call a practical pattern of teaching or preaching. And it should be used as a pattern or an example for those who are striving to be leaders, those who are striving to be effective parents. I want you to look at the method, the practical pattern that James chooses to use uh, to, to bring correction, to bring correction. Not only was it used by James, what's so interesting about it, it was used by Jesus. It was used of James in the book of James, especially in the third chapter of the book of James. It was used by Jesus in Revelation chapters two and three, and it was used by God in his dealings with Israel. I call it, I've tagged it, the sandwich method. The sandwich method. What is the sandwich method? I want you to notice that James, when he begins to correct the people of God, he uses the sandwich method. Yeah, the negatives are sandwiched in between two positives. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's sandwiched between. He addresses the, the positive first, the negatives second, and sandwiches the negatives in between two positives. Look at it. He begins by talking about careful speech. That's positive. Then he, he addresses uh, negative speech. He begins with careless speech, which we know is destructive, and also conflicting speech, which is deceptive. But he closes with constructive speech. So the sandwich method requires that you and I always, when we want to correct someone, when we want to faithfully rebuke someone and keep them in the faith, use the positive, then address the negatives, but always end like you began with a positive. That not only works for effective leaders, that works if you want to be an effective parent. When you're challenged to correct your child, don't go off the hinges. Yeah, no. Use what the Bible has left for us as an example of being able to correct people and not allow ourselves to go off the hinges or go off, period. But use, listen, if you want, if you want uh, Bible results, you got to do things in a Bible way. If it's good enough for James and it's good enough for Jesus and it's good enough for God, don't you think if we tried it, it'll work just as well for us? I'm here today to tell you, I'm a witness that the sandwich method works and you don't run the risk of offending people when you use the sandwich method. What's the sandwich method? Start with a positive, address the negative. By all means, address the negatives but close with a positive. So you'll leave the person you're correcting on a positive note. Notice what he does. He begins with a positive, careful speech. Then he addresses the negatives, conflicting speech, careless speech, but then he closes with a positive. That's called, that's what I call the sandwich method. So the next time you need to address someone on some negatives, always begin with a positive and end with a positive. Here, James begins with a positive and then ends with a negative and ends with a positive. And he addresses the negative in between two positives. I have to hurry here because I see my time is already up. But I want to share with you before we go.
please allow me to share with you that James not only used the sandwich method, here's another practical pattern of teaching and preaching by James. And I've learned so much personally from the book of James. And let me recommend it to those of you who are looking for an easy book to read. And it's your first study of a book in the Bible. Let me recommend the book of James because it's powerful, it's practical, and it's principled. Here's what James does. You almost miss it. And if you miss this, you'll miss that. So please understand what James is doing in the book of James, especially chapter three. He begins with, uh, uh, he begins with, with an explanation. He begins with an explanation about some significant information. So literally he starts with significant information. Then he gets, shares with us a significant illustration backing up the explanation and the information just given. And then in verse number five, he literally steps back waiting on us to make a significant transformation. And when I talk about transformation, I'm not talking about generic change. I'm talking about a radical change, a radical change, a radical change in your position, a radical change in your condition, a radical change in your belief, a radical change in your behavior. And the word belief is a Latin word which literally means to buy, live, or live by. You can't tell me you believe something if you're not willing to live by what you say you believe. So when we believe, belief always affects behavior. So James wants to see some change in our behavior. He wants to see some change in our position, in our condition, and even our direction. James is preaching, James is teaching for transformation, for a radical change in our lives. And the aim of any good teacher, the aim of any good preacher is not for entertainment, not for information, not to give explanations, but you're preaching and teaching for transformation, a radical change in the lives of your listener. I stopped by today to tell you that James requires a radical change in our position, in our condition, in our direction, in our belief, and in our behavior. I had much more to share with you, but I see that my time is well spent. Listen to me. I see that my time is up. It's far better to have God and not need him than to need God and not have him. If you walk with God, my God will surely walk with you. God bless you till we meet again.